Hi, Will here from the High River Fire Department. Today I'm going to take you through engine 42, which is a rescue slash pumper engine. Up front here we have our operator who can operate everything from driving the truck to the pump to the lights and sirens. Behind him we, we have a medical cabinet which is everything we need to take care of any medical calls we go to. Back here behind the medical cabinet we have where everyone sits. Here sits the nozzle man, the irons and the hydrant guy. This is where I'm sitting today. We have a, a uh, air tank here for our driver and every seat here has an air tank in the back of it. We have medical gloves up here and headsets for every member. We also have radio charger and flashlights ready to go. This is a thermal imaging camera up here. That's about it for in here. Back here we have our 44 millimeter crosslays. The guy comes out of this side can grab this one. And if you're on that side, you can grab that one because this nozzle is on that side for this one. Up here we have two different lights and a uh, spine board and a foam, foam suction. We also have a tripod for these lights up there too, which help really good at night time when we're on a vehicle electrification call. Here is the pump deck, also run by the driver operator. In here we have a lot of other hand tools for vehicle extrication, making entry into a house or a building of some sort. Back here we have all of our traffic cones and our signs and pylons and stuff, so we can stay safe on the road too. Up here, some more connections and a tow strap. And then we have some, some tips for our blitz fire and another nozzle, another gated wire under here. These drawers are mainly hand tools used for vehicle extrication as well. And here we have a couple of hand saws, a, a couple of reciprocating saws and an impact driver. And up here we have got all of our extensions for our pipe poles, our LA trash hooks and our drywall hooks, the squeegee and brushes and shovels and a piercing nozzle right here. In here, we have two spare BA tanks kept at 4500 PSI, ready for us to switch into those, those packs when we run out of air. Back here, we have all of our crib packs and stuff. These are for going underneath the vehicle to stabilize it when we're working around it. We have a winch here as well, and three different fire extinguishers up the side there. One, two, three. Here's our blitz fire for those stackable tips I mentioned earlier. So up here we have our ladders. We have a 24 foot extension ladder and a roof ladder, which has hooks on the end to hook over the peak of your roof. Up here we have an attic ladder, which is a ladder that's about this wide, but as soon as you can take it into a building, you can just open it up and you can climb into the attic. We have also have three pipe poles in here, which are used for interior operations, pulling down drywall in the roof, etc. Like down here we have the hydrant bag. As I'm on hydrant today, this is this is what I would grab if we were to go on a call. I put this by the hydrant. I come up here. I grab my hose, put it over by the hydrant, and use all of the tools that's in this bag to connect the truck to the hydrant. So here we have our, uh, our hydraulic tools. We have a hydraulic pump here. We have two different rams. One's an electric ram with a battery, and one is a hydraulic ram. We have a set of hydraulic cutters. We have our hydraulic jaws and our electronic combi tool. I'll show you how it looks quickly. Button here to turn it on. It acts as a spreader. So it's a cutter too. Now up above this we have all of our hoses and connections and extension cords and tarps and all the stuff we need to set everything up nicely. So in this cabinet here we have more stabilization stuff. We have our V struts, 
uh, struts, and bags of accessories to help us with those tools. Up here we have a, what we call a grip pack to help a downed firefighter, uh, give them more air, and another mask up here. We also have two utility rope bag, uh, bags and flat and water. Down here we have four more SCBA bottles, two in here and two in here. And they all have 4,500 PSI ready to drop into a pack for us to go. In this cabinet here, we have our K12 saw and our chainsaw. The chainsaw we'd use for cutting vents for smoke and roofs. And our K12 saw we uh, use to cut into, say, a garage door for access to a building. Here we have our vent fans for venting smoke and stuff out of the building. And our gas for filling up the saws. In this cabinet here, we have our high-rise packs, which is enough hose. Once it's up at the top of the stairs in a high-rise, you have enough to cover the whole floor. And a little bag of tools to go with it. So we have a nozzle, we have a gated Y, so we can run both of these two hoses. So here we have our cross legs again. This is the one that I showed you earlier from the other side, that the nozzle is on the other side. And here the nozzle is on this side for this one. Up above is more storage for our lights and stretchers and we also have a foldable stretcher up here. So up front here is the captain's seat. Here we have our uh, computer aided dispatch with a, with a map and it has the addresses to which we're going to. We have a, another thermal imaging camera and our captain has his own pack too. And this is up here is the radio he uses to talk with dispatch and stuff instead of having to use this one that we have. At the front of the truck here we have what's called a bumper load. This is usually what we would use if there's a garbage fire or a car fire or something. We can just pull this out, grab two of the couplings, deploy it, and then we can go fight the fire. This concludes our tour of the truck. Thank you for touring it with me and stay safe out there and remember social distancing. <laughs>